All right, so Halloween's right around the corner, and one thing I do during Halloween, I make a ridiculous amount of jack-o'-lantern pumpkins out of old propane tanks, okay? Uh, a lot of times you can find them at the junkyard, or uh, if you got a friend that works at a refillable station, they might have a bunch laying around like I do. But um, I make a lot of these, they're a lot of fun. Uh, you can probably get them for 10 bucks, depending on where you're at, you know what I mean? And uh, you need a couple tools when you're doing this. And uh, I use a plasma cutter. When I first started doing this, I didn't have one. I had an end grinder and a torch. And, uh, but basically it's just uh, making this stuff, it's kind of just a thing where like how creative you could be with the tools you have. You know, when I first started doing all this stuff, I worked out of my garage. Uh, I, I had your basic tools, you know, cheap welder, grinder, Dremel, real basic stuff, real cheap stuff. And, uh, you know, just, straps and uh i was able to make some cool stuff and it's just a matter of time before you know you make cool stuff you sell cool stuff and you're able to buy cooler tools to make your life easier but uh it's it's going to be a, a pretty basic build uh we're going to make a really cool looking jack -o lantern uh this is going to be a jack lantern for a guy that a guy ordered so uh we're going to be doing this for him so thank you for ordering my jack -o lantern i appreciate you sir and uh we're going to get this thing going for you so first things first you got to get a propane tank right here okay and with the propane tank, you got to be sure it's empty. So I already emptied this out. You know, this is ran on E. And the next thing is the fun enjoyment of breaking off that thing, which is a joy to do. So over here, there's a lot of ways to probably do this thing. But uh, I found out it's best just to use a, uh, use a hammer. You know, you just bang this thing off, and this is going to be the start of it. And this is the hardest thing of the whole job, okay? So you just get it. And if you want to start, you can start just whack that thing. Crack loose. See that? Crack loose. Boom. Almost there. And then what I got to do, you got to start hitting this stuff off, okay? And you can cut it off, but I just hit it off with the hammer. Right there, hit it. That's off. Right. Now what you gotta do, after right, you got this thing off, next thing, you gotta drain this thing. So what I do, get myself some water, get a funnel, and all I do, drain this thing down, and I fill it up. And all I'm doing is trying to get out all that excess gas, which I don't think there's a lot of, but, I don't want this thing blowing up on me. We're gonna empty it out. Are you gonna fast forward all this part? Probably. No respect. <laughs> Alright, so now that I got a hold of you, come over here. Alright, 
I am 100% sure there are more safer ways to get all the gas out of this stuff, but this is just how I do it. So I come over here. I just blow a shit ton of air. That's all I'm doing. And then all the fumes other the kitchen's any left in here. So we got this thing almost all ready to go. Got all the gas out. And uh, this is where the fun part kind of is. For stuff for you to get creative with what you want your jacket lantern to look like. Uh, and this one, it's gonna look like a guy smoking a cigar. You know, a lot of people like it. Everybody thinks it's pretty cool, but again, when you're doing this type of stuff, it's just what you want to do. There's no right or wrong way to do this, you know? If you want to make a girly one or if you want to make a typical old school jack o' lantern, whatever you want to do, it's all up to you. So, next, I'm going to cut this thing off. And it is all set to go. We got all the gas out of it, we got the top off. And it's uh, time to make time to start making the face. Uh, like I said, with the face, it's one of those things. You could do whatever you want to do. You could uh, do a regular looking jack o' lantern. You could paint it. You could do this. I like sticking the raw metal. I like the worn out rustic look. That's the coolest look. That's my look. That's the one that I think looks cool. Uh, some people like painting them. I don't like that. You know, I, I like making them look dirty and raw and all ugly looking. You know what I mean? But that's just me. And that's what I like doing. So I'm just gonna clean this up. And now we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do for the face. So one thing that always helps me out whenever I'm doing a face, I use a Sharpie. And uh, one big thing with plasma cutting, which I always usually tend to do uh, when we're making the face on this stuff, whatever my negative area is, that's the part that's gonna fall out, your dead part. Uh, I color that in with a sharp because it's really easy when you're cutting stuff out to get things mixed up. So this is going to give you an exact outlook of what this thing's going to kind of look like. So I'm going to start with the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And then we're going to put a cigar in its mouth, which is cool. So over here, uh, I've done a lot of these, so I kind of already know what I like. I'm going to come over around here. I'm going to come around here. And then I'm going to come up and out over here like that, you know. And then I'm going to come over here for the other eye and I'm going to come up, I'm going to come down, around, squiggle it up, up, and around, just like that. And then we'll kind of just even them up a little bit. So that's kind of, you know, I think it looks, I think it looks cool and the eyes look like this, but you know, you can do whatever you want. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do the nose. So the nose. I'm gonna have it come down, around, and up. So just like that. And then what I'm gonna do next are the teeth. So the teeth, the mouth, I'm gonna come up, over, and this is going to have the cigar side, so I'm going to have this mouth kind of up a little bit. And then I'm going to come up over again, and just like that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make his teeth. So over here, you know what I mean? I'm going to come down, and this is where, like, being in high school and I've just basically doodled in all my classes, this is where this comes in really handy. This is why I'm great at this. You know, so thank you, Homer Flossmore. You know, made me the man I am today. And this is what I'm talking about. So over here, I'm gonna come in over there like that. And then I'm gonna make another one like this. And I'm gonna make another one like that. And I'm gonna make another one like this. And these little connection things, that's, that's what's gonna be holding up his teeth. 
Okay. So then I'm gonna make another tooth just like this. And then I might make one more tooth just like that. And like I said, you can't screw up doing this. You know what I mean? This is just, no matter what you do, it's gonna look cool. You know, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Get that one a little bit bigger, then I'll make this a little tooth right here. So yeah, and then the cigar, I'm probably gonna put the cigar right over here. So that's pretty good, much gonna be the outline of the entire face. So, it looks like absolute crap now, but trust me, it looks cool when it's all done. So over here. Uh, next, I got my layout all done. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get ready to, to do all my clay. So we got paper towels around, and get on fire. Get all this stuff out the way. I'm gonna grab my stuff and we're gonna start playing. Okay, so thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing a plastic cutting, always be sure you got a really good ground, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make my ground. I'm gonna put my grinder over here, I'm gonna grind a little bit, bit of pan off, and that's gonna be my ground. So we're just like this. Just like that, so that's gonna be my ground, okay? You want to make your life easy whenever you're welding or whenever you're using a plasma cutter, make a good ground. It's going to save you all the headache. So then, come around, zap that thing on. So now, rule number two whenever you're using a plasma cutter and you're trying to get comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, get yourself in a spot where you know you can move around like this. My fab table already has these slots cut out of it. You know what I mean? If you don't have that, get some wood, get two pieces of angle iron, put them together, but get it so it's not moving together like this. You know what I mean? You can stand it up, but it's kind of tough using a plasma cutter like this compared to your hands being on top of it. Again, do what you're comfortable with doing. Me, I like doing it just like this. So now we're gonna start cutting. Let's hope all this gas is up. just there for a rough sketch of what I'm doing. I, I really pay no attention to it. You know what I mean? I, you know, I kind of follow them, but all in all, when I'm doing something like this and it's just, I get to make it however I want, all these lines are there. They're just so I can get an idea of where I'm at. You know what I mean? These, I'm not really following them. Uh, and again, it's just giving me an idea. So a lot of times what helps me when I'm using a plasma cutter and everything like that, and this is for art stuff, not for you know, stuff that where the measurement has, uh, matters. You know what I mean? For the stuff like this, I just kind of just freehand a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't care about the lines and that's why I'm going so fast. I'm really not focused on it. Uh, and that's just something to keep in mind because otherwise you're gonna get a lot of burn through and you're gonna get the metal super hot. So just, uh, you know, just let it flow. You know what I mean? If you wanna make something a certain size, make it a certain size. And remember too, it's metal and you can always weld back on a piece of metal. So don't get hard up on, you know, I didn't follow the line perfectly. Who cares, okay? So we're gonna keep cutting. 
And now all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fine tune some stuff, okay? Uh, again, do what you wanna do, make it how you want. You know, if you think you wanna, you know, cut a little bit. And in my opinion, the more screwed up it looks, the better it ends up looking out in the long run, so. So that, that looks pretty cool. And that's what I'm gonna do. Um, one thing I kind of do like when I'm doing these things, you know, adding some little shapes around here, maybe some scars, you know, just make them, make them look a little weird. So I'm gonna come over here. You know, we're gonna add a scar right over here. ugly uh we're gonna kind of you know make it look a little bit distressed and beat up so i got a couple tricks to do that too one way i like doing it come over here and I grab a torch I'm just cooking off the paint, you know. I like the old look, you know what I mean? I like it when they look all ugly and screwed up looking and nasty, and, you know. But if you don't like that look, don't do it like that. See, that looks really cool now. Know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab my wire wheel. Again, that's this type of style that I like. You know, if you don't like that, don't do it like this. Paint it, do whatever you want. But it's just, uh, you know, the whole point of this thing is just, you know, finding something and trying to make something cool out of some junk. <laughs> I dig it. Next, uh, we gotta do the little stem thing, whatever you call that on punkin'. 